Hello everyone, I'm Delphine and today I'm going to guide you through the Using Dataset Collections tutorial to explore what we can do in Galaxy with collections. So the big advantage of using dataset collection instead of single uh, datasets by themselves is instead of manipulating uh, 10 datasets every time, you're going to use uh, manipulate only one object all along your analysis. So to get started, we're going to uh, download a set of files that are issued from sequencing. And we're going to copy the URL that are in the training tutorial. And we're going to go into your favorite Galaxy instance, create a new history, name it uh, however you want. Here, collection tutorial, save. And we're going to upload data. Use the pass fetch data button, and here you're going to pass the URLs that you copied from the training material. In order to be sure that we're using that Galaxy is detecting the right format, we're going to uh, pre specify which type of file we are using. Here we're using fastqsanger.gz. You're going to start the import and close the window. We're going to wait a couple of seconds for it to load. Now that the data sets are downloading, we're going to organize them into a collection. So we want to organize them into what's called a list of data set pairs. Why pairs? Because we notice that we have underscore one and underscore two, which in sequencing experiments signify forward read and reverse read, and uh, both files are generated for each sample. So the way the um, file is named corresponds to the name of the experiment, the name of the sample, and finally reverse or forward read. So in order to organize these data sets into a collection, we're going to select them using uh, the select button and select all. And then for all eight selected, we're going to build a list of data set pairs. So Galaxy detects automatically uh, the syntax of the name file, but in order for you to learn how it's done, we're going to pretend it didn't detect it. So we're going to unpair everything, clear the filters, and fill it uh, manually. So the first one, uh, we want to we have eight unpaired forward file. And we're going to specify that the extension for the forward reads is underscore one. Same way for the uh, reverse read, we have eight unpaired reversed file. And we're going to specify that underscore two means that we have the uh, reverse read. And you can see that uh, filling these uh, fields, Galaxy pair automa detect automatically that with the same name and a different extension, these two files are supposed to be paired together. So we're going to pair all four pairs of data sets and we're going to name our collection M117-collection for the name of the experiment. We're going to hide the original element because we're not going to use them individually in the rest of the analysis. But if you need to use them for other purposes, you can decide to keep them in history. We're going to create collection. And we see here that instead of eight data sets, we end up with only one object to manipulate. Uh, you can still see that when you click on the collection, you're going to find your four sample. And for each sample, you're going to have your two files for forward and reverse read here in fastqsanger.gz file uh, format. You can either come back one step into the collection or directly to the uh, main history with this shortcut. And now that we have a pair of sequence collection, uh, we're going to upload a reference genome to align them to. So you can find the URL for the reference genome in the uh, tutorial, in the training material. Here, chromosome m.fasta.gz. So we're going to copy the URL. And as we did previously, upload data, past fetch data, copy the URL. And this time, we're going to uh, specify that we're using a fasta.gz file format. Start, close. And we're going to wait a couple minutes for it to upload. Now that we have our paired read collection and our reference genome, we're going to use the tool BWA-MEM 
to align our reads to our reference. In order to find that tool in the uh, toolbar, we're going to use the search field and tap BWA. And we're going to use BAP map with BWMM. So you can see here the tool form. And uh, the first parameter that we're going to change is instead of using a built-in genome index, we're going to use a genome from history and build the index uh, on the go. So we're going to select the file that we just uploaded, chromosome m.fasta.gz as fasta. Uh, we're going to change, we're not going to change the algorithm used by BWA. And uh, for the paired Android, we're going to specify that we're using a paired collection and enter the M117 collection that we prepared earlier. Uh, we are not changing any other parameters for this tool and we can click here on run tool. We're going to wait a couple of minutes for the aligner to run and then we're going to look what the output looks like. Now that our alignment is done running, we can take a look at what the output collection looks like. So we notice that we have a collection with four data sets this time. And the reason why is because BWMM take as an input one data one set of forward read and one set of reverse reads and output one alignment for these two inputs. Since we had four sets of uh, paired reads, we have then four alignments organized in one collection. So each of these four alignments is a binary BAM file. And we're going to use these alignments to detect a variation between uh, the reference and our uh, samples. In order to do that, we're going to use the tool uh, called variance with low freq. So we're going to type call variance in the research bar and select call variance with low freq. So you can see here that it doesn't find one data set and that's because we need to precise to specify that we're going to use a data set collection and we're going to use the collection outputted by BWMM. As previously, we're going to use a genome from the history and select uh, the FASTA file that we have uploaded. And we're going to call genome across the whole reference and we're going to uh, select both SNVs and indels. We're not going to change any other parameters and we're going to run low freq with this set of parameters. Run tools and we'll come back in a couple of minutes once the variant call is done running. So this variant call tool output file called VCF. And we can take a look and we see a number of information on uh, what is the um, quality of the run, as well as a list of uh, variants detected, their position and different uh, information for each variant. Uh, so what we want to do now is organize them in a tabulated file, which is easier for manipulation and for subsequent analysis. And to do that, we're going to use SNP shift um, tool and we're going to use SNP shift extract field from a VCF. So as we did earlier, we're going to specify that we want to use a data set collection and we're going to use the covariance on collection 11 that has been produced by the previous step. And we're going to select the field to extract uh, using the line specified in the training material. So you can select the line, copy it, and copy it in the field to extract. We're going to select one effect per line. So once we have changed all this parameter, we can run the tool. And we're going to extract the variance from a VCF into a tabulated file. Okay, now that we extracted the files into tabulated files, we can take a look and see that we have indeed one line per effect in addition to one header line specifying what each column corresponds to. So we have one file per sample, but in order to run a further analysis, most of the tool we only used one file with different sample for each line. So in order to do that, we're going to use a tool called Collapse Collection into a single file. 
you can go to the search bar and look for collapse. And here we're going to select collapse collection into a single data set in order of the collection. So we're going to select a data set collection, which is the SNP SIFT extract field output. We're going to keep one header line to keep the information on what each column corresponds to. And we're going to prepend the file name so that for each line we have which sample the uh, variance belongs to. So we're going to use uh, prepend the file name on each line and in the same line uh, than the rest of the data. So once we've done that, we're going to run the tool. And we can see that instead of a collection, it output only one single data set. So we're going to wait a couple of seconds for it to run. Now that it's done running, let's take a look at the resulting file. We click on the I, and we can see that we have all the variants from our four sample co collapsed into one single file. And for each line, we have the sample the variance has been identified in. So in this short tutorial, we've seen how to create a collection, how to use it in different tool form, and how to manipulate uh, this collection to collapse into a single file. A lot more operations are available. Uh, you can look at the collection operation to have an idea of all the different ways you can use collection and manipulate them uh, to fit your needs. Uh, they are described in more detail in the rest of the tutorial. Uh, it's a great collections are a great tool to facilitate your work and to uh, declutter your histories. And uh, if you have any question on uh, how to use collection and uh, or how to optimize your work, uh, we are available on the uh, Galaxy Project training channel for any question you have. And I hope you have a great experience for the rest of your training event. Thank you and have a good day.